Hi, my name is Bruce Weinstein. I'm the host of Ask the Plan Man. Everybody deserves a plan in life. And this week's episode, we're going to be discussing the anatomy of a paycheck. It astonishes me that most people don't understand the dynamics of what happens out of their paycheck, where their taxes go, what taxes they're even paying or should be paying. And then we're going to tie this into taking advantage of the benefits that your company or your employer are offering to you. So let's start out with the basics of you're going to get paid weekly, biweekly, every other week, or twice a month, whatever it is. And there's certain line items that come out, one of which is very confusing to most younger people as they start out, and that's FICA. FICA is your Social Security and Medicare tax. That's pegged at 7.65%. And then the Medicare tax uh, is taken out from that on an open-ended basis, meaning there's an annual limit to how much FICA comes out, somewhere around $110,000, $120,000 a year as your annual income. That's where it's capped. You no longer will fund FICA itself. But then Medicare tax, which is a little bit less than 1%, will continue thereafter. Depending on what state you live in, depending on the cities that you live in, you're going to have a city tax, you're going to have a state tax. I'm down here in Florida. One of the reasons I left New Jersey and the New York metropolitan area was to get away from state income tax. That varies, again, based on state, anywhere from 1% upwards as high as 10%. New York City, New Jersey, or New York State, I should say, when you start crossing a half a million dollars a year or more of income, you're paying upwards of 10% just to your state. This does not count your property tax. This does not count your sales tax. This is just state income tax. Next, we have your federal tax. Depending on whether you're single or married, you have what's called a graduated rate. The more you make, the higher your tax brackets will go. They call them marginal tax rates, and then you'll calculate your effective tax rate. But why tax deductions are so important and you want to take advantage of your pre-tax savings out of your payroll is to keep your marginal brackets lower. As an example, the first $40,000 is taxed at less than 10%. But as you surpass the 40,000, it becomes 15 and 20 and 28 and 33 and 35%. So the more you make, you're going to start paying larger and larger amounts of federal income tax. And that could be the same for your state. New Jersey, you didn't start out at 10%, but you worked your way up to 10% once you crossed a half a million. So everything below a half a million would have been taxed at five, six, seven, eight percent And then every dollar above 500000 in New Jersey and New York, you're paying 10% state income tax. Well, it's the same on the federal side. As you hit certain levels, that next range or band of income is now taxed at that higher rate. So you want to take advantage of the tax deductions like your health insurance benefits. Those come out pre-tax. If your employer offers you benefits, you are paying some of those benefits. They do get to come out on a pre-tax basis. Why is that important? Well, if I'm in a 30% tax bracket, it's really only costing me 70 cents on a dollar. It's not costing me that full dollar. Whereas if I had to pay the benefits outside of payroll, I may not be able to pick up that tax deduction due to something called a donut hole, meaning there's thresholds before certain things can be taken off of your taxes. We're not going to get into that today. Seek your tax advisor for more on that. What we want to look at and concentrate on next is, again, where most people out there under the age of 30 fail to take advantage. Forget under the age of 30. A lot of people in general don't take advantage of their employer's 401k or retirement plans, especially, especially if there is a match involved. We work with a lot of small businesses. We run their health insurance plans for them. And we're constantly seeing that the employees are not taking advantage of the 401k match. What exactly is a 401k match? If I'm an employer and I have an incentive and anybody who's in my retirement plan, we're going to match 5% of their income up to a certain amount. Maybe it's up to $1,000, $2,000. It could be open-ended based upon their income. So if I'm going to give you up to 5% of your salary, I'm going to match it dollar for dollar. That means if you put in 5% of your income, I'm going to match it 100%. So if you make $30,000 a year, 5% of your income is $1,500. 
you're going to get an immediate contribution from your employer for another $1,500. The simple math is you just doubled your investment return without even putting it into an investment vehicle, meaning a stock or a bond or a mutual fund, even cash, earning some interest. You immediately doubled your money. But wait, there's more. You get a tax deduction, unless you're doing a Roth contribution, but if you're doing a pre tax contribution to your retirement plan and you're in a 30% tax bracket, you're only putting in 70 cents on a dollar, meaning your paycheck is only really seeing 70 cents come out. It's not seeing the full dollar because you were giving 30% of that away to the government in tax. So you put in 70 cents on a dollar. Let's say that $1,500 is really only costing you $1,000. You put $1,000 in net paycheck. You're seeing a contribution of how much? $1,500 go in. You just made 50% on your money in this case. Again, I'm rounding the numbers. And then you're getting a match of another $1,500 on top of that. So for your $1,000, you're really getting a $2,000 credit to your 401k in this case, TSA, depending on what vehicle, 403b. So your retirement plan. So where else can you get an instantaneous double, if not triple on your investment? Well, that's taking advantage of a pre-tax contribution to your 401k from your employer that has a match. Even if there's not a match available, you're still picking up the tax savings. Now, if your income bracket is a little bit less, you're not in a very high tax bracket, it might make sense to use a Roth contribution to your plan, which is going in after tax. So the net impact is still the same on your payroll, on your net paycheck. We do an exercise called take-home pay. And so take-home pay really is what are you bringing home on a net, not what you're making on a gross, because nobody gets to spend their gross paycheck. They only get to spend their net paycheck, and then they pay their car payment, their rent or mortgage, <laughs> And, and the other uh, lifestyle expenses, okay? We're gonna do an episode on budget, so you could tune in for that next. When we're talking about your Roth contribution, if you're in a low tax bracket, the theory is that in the next 40, 50, 60 years, eventually taxes always go up, they rarely go down. And so you're getting money put away that you've paid your tax. If you're in a five, zero, five, 10, maybe 20% tax bracket, it might be in a better calculation for you to put the money in on an after-tax basis. Now, what happens in a Roth? Well, the Roth grows tax-free, but most importantly, it comes out tax-free. So by getting the taxes out of the way when you're younger, getting the taxes out of the way when you're in a lower tax bracket, you always want to take advantage of that. So when my kids first started getting W-2 paychecks, where they became eligible for Roth contributions, as a student, they pay no tax. They don't pay FICA. They don't pay state. They don't pay federal. They're called exempt. And so they made two, three, four thousand dollars and we took that money and we put that into Roths for them. There was no tax implication. It was a zero tax uh, implication for them. And now they got this money to grow, compound, and ultimately come out later on in their lives on a tax-free basis. So we want to be able to take advantage of that. If your tax bracket starts at seeding 25, 30, certainly 40%, it might behoove you, depending on your age, to look at the pre-tax contribution and get that money tax deducted out of your paychecks. Now, Let's segue the anatomy of a paycheck. Why we're talking about doing this, especially for people under the age of 30, under the age of 40. Uh, you know, Certainly, if, if I had to go back in time to talk to my 22-year-old self when we first got started working, uh, you know, $2,000 was the most you can contribute to a 401k back at that time. Well, I was making $19,000 a year, $20,000 a year. So $2,000 was a lot of money. I had a car loan, I had a student loan, I had a mortgage. So you know, where's all that money coming from? So in the early years, as most people do, is we forego that opportunity. Well, guess what? I want to talk about what I call the compounding effect of money. If I could describe it for you, my listener here, the best way I can, if you're visual, stick with me here, is think of camel humps. Some camels have one hump, some camels have two. What compounding of money does is we're going to count the camel humps 
of the frequency of how often your money doubles, meaning you have a dollar. When does it become two? When does two become four? When does four become eight? Each one of those is a doubling mechanism or my camel hump. The rule of 72 is a mathematical way for you to figure out how frequently your money will compound. You take the number 72. If you made 8% on your money, 8 into 72, the answer is 9. That means every nine years, your money is going to double. A 22-year-old is going to be 31, 40, 49. Am I doing that right? Let's start over. 21, 30. 22-year-old, I said. 22 becomes 31. 31 doubles again at 40, 49, 58, and 67. So if you see my hand on camera, that's five camel humps at a nine. 8% rate of return doubling every nine years. So a 22-year-old is going to have a dollar, become $2, becomes $4, becomes $8, becomes $16, becomes $32. So from the age of 22 to the age of 67, you're going to turn $1, $1 into $32, $1,000 into $32,000. Now, what if you made 12% on your money? Well, now that's a 6 camel hump, right? That's every six years. So now the 22-year-old is what? 28, 34, 40, 46, 52, 58, 64. We can go one more to 70. So the difference of either 64 or 70 to a 67-year-old, we're now between seven and eight camel humps. So again, a dollar becomes two, four, eight, 16, 32, but now we get two more, 32 becomes 64, 128, and if they wait till 70, 256. So $1,000 for a 22-year-old making 12% compounded on their money to the age of 70 can turn that into $256,000. That's just $1,000. So what you have to your advantage as a younger person, why it's important to get into your retirement plans, even though you may not want to sacrifice some of that money, is the compounding of money is your biggest ally. Now, how do you make 8%, 9%, 12%? You got to go look at your asset allocation. You got to look at the opportunities of the investments. We're not going to get into that today. That's an investment conversation. But the compounding effect is what we want to talk about, why your payroll contribution, getting that match. If you put in 1,000 and your employer is giving you 1,000, now you have $2,000 times all those multiplications that 256 is now $512,000. So think about the math of how much money you can amass somewhere in your 60s to early 70s by just putting away a few dollars at a young age and letting that money sit. If you don't know anything about stocks and bonds, it's a great way to learn more. You could check into some of our episodes. You can go online and Google. But simply an index fund, the S&P 500 has an historical rate of return, stocks in general, blue chip stocks, have an historical rate of return between 10 and 12%. That's not for a one-year period. That's not for a 10-year period. That's 100 plus years of investing. So just buying an inexpensive S&P 500 index fund and putting it away for the next 50 years, you should accomplish a 10 to 12% rate of return based upon historically past performance. Again, disclosure, past performance is no indication of future performance. So I certainly don't know what's going to happen in the next 50, 60 years. And I doubt I'll be here to help you at that back end. But if you stick to your guns, you become a student of history and learn more about investing and the markets and the index funds, you can certainly take advantage of that. Now, you want to play, you want to pick certain stocks. Again, you think you could be like Warren Buffett, look at his rate of returns historically, the man virtually never sells. So treat your portfolio as an investment, not a casino. Don't play games, don't trade options, buy dividend blue chip stocks, reinvest those dividends, things of that nature. Balance between value stocks, which pay dividends and growth stocks like technology. Take advantage of the new opportunities out there. But remember, things are ever changing. You always want to revisit. We just did an episode on rebalancing. So you want to make sure that you balance. Anyway, I digress. I want to get back to the anatomy of a paycheck, why it's important to understand your take home pay where your money's going, and if you're not taking advantage of your employer's retirement plan match, you're doing yourself a great disservice. If you have any questions, come check us out at Plan Man TV. Hit me up at 844-PLAN-MAN, Bruce at asktheplanman.com. 
Everybody deserves a plan. Everybody needs a plan. You want to be proactive. Thanks for joining me again. My name is Bruce Weinstein, and I'm your plan man. When you need some advice, never sacrifice. Always get it right. Ask a plan.